Hi everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Nick Pavlov. In this video, I wanted to show you how you can quickly and easily create paginated reports in Microsoft Fabric. Remember in the past in Power BI, we had to use a separate tool called Report Builder and it required a certain level of learning and time before you could build a decent looking paginated report. But now, all of this is in the past because Fabric has really improved the entire paginated report building experience. So in this video, we'll take a look at this feature. First, we'll talk about what is a paginated report. Then we will focus on key features of paginated reports. And then last, I'm going to show you how to create a paginated report in Microsoft Fabric. So what is a paginated report? A paginated report is often referred to as a pixel perfect report. And it's designed for scenarios where you need to print a report or produce a PDF file that keeps the exact custom formatting that you have. So unlike regular Power BI reports, which are more interactive and dynamic, paginated reports let you control exactly how the report looks on each page. This is very useful for traditional reporting formats, uh, such as invoices, billing statements, um, you know, or detailed operational reports with specific layouts and formatting. So what are the key features of a paginated report? Number one is pixel perfect formatting. Paginated reports provide a high level of control over the report's layout, ensuring that each page is formatted exactly as needed. This feature is especially beneficial for printed reports or PDFs, like I said before, where precise alignment, consistent font, and exact positioning of tables and other visuals and text is important. Number two, paginated reports are efficient at handling large data sets. And what I mean by that is, unlike regular Power BI reports that are designed for on-screen use, paginated reports are made to display large volumes of data across multiple pages efficiently, avoiding excessive scrolling. And lastly, print and export features. Paginated reports are ideal for situations where a digital report needs to be converted into a physical document without losing the layout and formatting. Before Microsoft Fabric, to create a paginated report, you had to download and use a Power BI Report Builder, which is a separate tool designed for creating paginated reports. Then you would connect to your various data sources and bring all of that data in, and then you would build a report. And finally, you would publish the paginated report in a premium workspace and then share it with others. Now, with Microsoft Fabric, the creation of paginated reports has become a lot easier. Let's go to my screen and see how that's done. I'm here in my Fabric workspace and I'm going to filter for lake houses and semantic models. These are my three lake houses and their semantic models. The semantic model is created automatically when you create a lake house. Before the November update, just a couple weeks ago actually, the semantic model used to be called a data set. I will go to the semantic model of my selected lake house, which is a worldwide importers demo lake house, and click to the ellipsis sign with three dots. And then here I will choose create paginated report. Or I can also just click onto my, my data set, so a semantic model, and here I could choose create a paginated report. Either way, this is going to lead you to the same interface. And this is a very intuitive interface, to be honest, because on your left, you have a canvas, you have filters, build, and data. So what you can do, you can drag and drop and select whatever columns from tables that you need, and then you can put it onto your report. And then, of course, you can use filters to filter your data. Let me show you what you can do with that. So let me close out these um, panes for now so I have more real estate here. And then let me go to the Insert tab. Right, so right here I can insert an image. And the image could be just URL. You can just find that on the internet and just paste the URL and that's all you need. So I found this random logo on Google, right? And then I copied that link and then I'm just going to paste it right here. So when I insert this, the image will appear on my canvas. All right, so I can move this a little bit to my right, right here. So after that, I can insert a text box and write the name of my report. 
a wide world importers report, for example. Let's make this bigger, so 20, and drag it this way. You can also go to the View tab, and then right here you can hide margins, these ones, or a divider, like that. I actually like to have it here, so I see the margins in the divider. Let's move this up here. And so after that, I can actually start building um, the actual report. So let's go to my data set. This is a data set from one of my previous videos, actually. So uh, let's open the product table, and I have uh, the product name. Let's put the product name, and then uh, let's also do a couple measures. So I can go to my order details table where I have measures. I should have a couple measures. So let's put total sales and total orders. Actually, total orders have make no sense because it's it's just the same amount of orders. Yeah, we can do average order value, right? That makes more sense. And here, I can right away see that I made a mistake when making a measure. Someone actually pointed that out in my previous video. Uh, thanks a lot for that. So I made a mistake. I was thinking about a margin, and for some reason I you know, converted that into a percent, but obviously average order value should be a dollar amount, not a percent. So in this case, what I will do is I will open that in another window and fix that measure. Open another window here, right? So I'm not losing my report, which I'm building. I'll go to the um, SQL endpoint view. Once this loads up, I'll go to model. And I will find my table where that measure lives, and that's called average order value, right here. And what I need is in the formatting section right here, in the properties, I'm going to change this to currency. So this is going to be a dollar amount. Something went wrong, sometimes that happens, um, don't worry about it. All right, so formatting, sort of percent, currency, and this is going to be a thousand separator and decimal places I want to have two. All right, this is done. I can now close this one here. So now I will go back to my paginated report and then remove this measure and put it back in. And ideally this should work. All right, it's not working. Um, all right, so what I will do is now then um, I will refresh my page. Hopefully I'm not going to lose my report. Oh, I lost my report. The formatting is all gone now. Okay. Uh, this is something that Microsoft uh, team probably needs to uh, take a look at. All right. So let's build that again. So I'm, I'm going to put the product name. Then I'm going to go back to the order details. And then I'm going to put total sales and average order value. All right. And this time... It is displayed correctly, right? I'm seeing the dollar amount. I'm not seeing uh, percent. That's good. Now, another column I wanted to add is quantity. I actually have a column called quantity, so I'm not even going to create a measure, although I could. It's probably a good idea, but it's just a demo, right? So using a column would be fine too. All right. And another thing I wanted to do, I wanted to go to my date table. I wanted to use a year filter. So I'll throw it in here and I will filter it to include only 1997, so one year. And now my report will uh, refresh and I will see the data for one year only. I can also do another type of filtering, right? I can manually select or exclude, you know, certain columns. It's just a regular filtering in Power BI. I mean, it works the same way. I'm not going to change anything. So this is my paginated report. Now I can add, I can go to insert and then I can add the text box and the image like I showed you, but I'm not going to do that again. Another thing you can do, you can also play with formatting. So you can go to build and then here, there's a formatting pane and you can change, you know, a style of your uh, table. So we, you can do, for example, bold header and your table is going to change. Uh, you can also click on a column like that and change the names of your columns if you need to. For example, product name should probably have space. 
Here I wanted to pause the video and make a little correction. Last night when I was recording this, I forgot to turn on the microphone and this part was missing. So what I did after this was go to the viewing mode by clicking on the little button right next to table format tab. This will request you to save a paginated report and then take you to the viewing mode. So lastly, what I can do, uh, once I am here in the viewing, this is what my report will look like, right? And then I can go to the export under the home tab and then select it in all of the available format. I just saved a PDF version of it on my computer. So this is the, this is my report in PDF format. And this is what it will look like if I printed my report. All right, that's it for today, guys. This new low-code or rather no-code experience when creating paginated reports is incredible. Microsoft Fabric is doing a great job of simplifying things that were a little bit harder in the past, and the paginated reports experience is, is a good example of that. I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, more videos will be coming up. Until then, have a good one, and I'll talk to you later.